Well, I, th- I think look, gold gold is uh, gold is performing unusually well in an era of rising real rates, which is normally the, what its Achilles' heel. So gold has been particularly strong. It, it crashed through an all time high and and then crashed down again. Um, you know, it went through twenty one hundred like a hot knife through butter, and then was battered all the way back down below two thousand. But it's bounced again. It's showing remarkable resilience um, in the face of concerted selling. And I'm not don't mean that in a conspiratorial way. I mean people that think that it's gone through levels that it, it's a sell. You know, there's, there's there are charts that show you a you know strong triple top in gold, and it could be how guys reacting to that. But you've got something here that you haven't had before, and that is um, heavy, concentrated, and price insensitive central bank buying. You know, we saw a thousand tons get bought by central banks in 2022. That's an all time high. The record's going back 75 years. Um, they're on pace to do the same again this year. And if you go back to the late 90s um, or the mid to late 90s when central banks were concerted sellers of gold, um, you saw the price get cut in half, essentially, with just a grinding downward trajectory that wasn't stabilized until 1999 when they signed the first central bank gold agreement where they would limit sales of gold to, I think it was 4,000 tons a year between them, which is a lot. Was it 2,000 tons? Yeah, I forget the numbers now. Um, but it was still a significant amount. Um, but having central banks as sellers of gold cut the price in half. Um, and of course, if the gold price is going down because there are heavy price-insensitive sellers, the producers of gold can react to that. They can cut production. You know, they can they can they can leave gold in the ground and they can they can adjust to lower prices. What we have now is the ex- exact opposite conditions. We have central banks who are price insensitive buyers of gold. They've proven that over the last year. We've seen a definite, whether people want to admit it or not, a move to, uh, if not replace the dollar as the as the main reserve asset in the world, not reserve currency, reserve asset. Um, we've seen an undeniable move towards diversifying away from treasury bonds and into gold on the part of central banks, particularly after the sanctions on Russia in the wake of the Ukraine invasion. What you don't have, if you have all these this this cartel of of price insensitive buyers of gold, is the ability to uh, increase supply. You can't do that; it's impossible. You know, increased supply of gold takes years of exploration and mining and permitting and all this stuff, and that's only getting harder in the age of ESG. So, when you saw gold get cut in half when the central banks were selling, uh, you could see gold go up two or three times if central banks remain committed buyers to gold because there's there's no one else to supply them. So, you know, I think, and this is the reason I'm writing about gold, I think it's the first time I've written about it this year um, because I think what's happening is very interesting and I see a, an incredibly bullish setup for gold going forward regardless of what happens. You know, I look through all the scenarios where inflation comes back, um, particularly monetary inflation, um, that's extremely bullish for gold. If the dollar gets weaker, um, because the Fed cut rates, that's extremely bullish for gold. Um, if we go into a recession, that's generally speaking bullish for gold. You know, there there are there are an awful lot of ways that you can be constructively bullish for gold right now. Um, and of course, you can be bearish because gold always does what you least expect it to. Um, but I think the, the the backdrop for gold is particularly constructive right now.